Six Flags is the largest theme park operator here in North America. Some parks are great, some parks are decent, and then there are parks that you know you're going to have a Six Flags day at. So here is how I rank each Six Flags park that I visited from best to worst, based on my experience at each park and what each one offers. And this wouldn't be a theme park predictions video without a few surprises along the way. And here's the first one. The best Six Flags park that I've experienced in my opinion will be Six Flags Fiesta Texas. Yes, Fiesta Texas. And remember that this list is in my opinion and I'm about to share with you exactly why Fiesta Texas ranks as the best park within the chain. Fiesta Texas honestly doesn't even feel like your typical Six Flags park. And this stems from the management to the beautiful 100 foot tall rock quarry wall that pretty much surrounds the back side of the park and of course the coasters. Iron Rattler, Superman Krypton Coaster, Poltergeist, and Wonder Woman is an underrated top 4 in my opinion. Now the park is about to add to that when Cliffhanger opens in 2022. Fiesta Texas offers some great rides, high quality shows, an awesome train ride, a traditional ferris wheel, and the best log flume and mine train in the entire chain. Where Fiesta lacks is their free with admission water park, Whitewater Bay, and their kids area. Both could use some much needed improvement. I know I'm not alone when I say this, but Fiesta really is a step above all the other Six Flags parks when it comes to quality. There's a reason why it's one of the biggest money makers in the chain and year after year, the park always gets new capital. Exhibit A, a new shiny B&M coaster debuting in 2022. Now out of the 15 Six Flags parks, I've been to 11 of them and I'm hoping to visit all of them very soon. So here are the four parks that I've yet to visit. Frontier City. I really think I will enjoy this park, but probably will not visit until they get a new coaster. So in other words, it might be a wow. La Ronde. The location of this park is the most enticing thing about this place for me, but I would sure love to take a few laps on Goliath and see the beautiful views of the St. Lawrence River in downtown Montreal. Six Flags Discovery Kingdom. This is a park that I've always wanted to visit. It looks to have some great coasters, awesome animal exhibits, and shows. And that's my kind of park. Six Flags Mexico. I've heard a ton of great things about Six Flags Mexico and their two standouts, Superman and Steel Medusa. Now I just have to get down there to ride them. Also, be sure to check out ThemeParkPredictions.com for more predictions and my coaster merch. The holidays are coming and this here is the perfect gift. And now for the second best park within the Six Flags chain, and that would be Six Flags Great America. This is a solid park. The only real area where I can say they need improvement would be in the thrill ride department. But coaster wise, Six Flags Great America offers the second best overall coaster lineup within the entire Six Flags chain. This park does not offer a bad coaster. I don't really care for the Joker, but it's not a bad coaster by all means. Now here's the thing that I love most about Great America, the layout. I love the fact that you can get off one coaster or ride and then you're immediately greeted with another. It really makes Great America easy to navigate and that usually means more coaster rides. Six Flags Magic Mountain. This park has to be in everyone's top three. And while my last visit was full of having a Six Flags day vibe, I refuse to let that lower this park on my list. Coasters galore and some of the best in the country. And now Magic Mountain will add their new single rail coaster to this already impressive lineup. I really do appreciate how Six Flags uses the terrain here at the park for their rides and coasters. And the fact that a few of the rides are located at the top of the hill surrounded by the rest of the park. Now, if only Magic Mountain would get some more thrill rides and the new entrance that I created for the park a while back. And you don't want to miss that, so the link to that video will be in the description of this video. Six Flags Over Georgia This park is so hit or miss for many of us, including myself, but there's something about Over Georgia that I love, and I can't put my finger on it. I know that Goliath and Twisted Cyclone are a fantastic one-two punch, and I love that Over Georgia offers two dark rides. Just like Magic Mountain, Over Georgia offers a hilly terrain that just gives the park more character. And speaking of terrain, I refuse to not bring up the placement of Goliath. I love how the park's hypercoaster interacts with existing rides and travels outside the park. Overall, I love Six Flags Over Georgia during the first four hours of my day. Then after that fifth hour, I typically start having a Six Flags day. Six Flags Great Adventure Yes, this park is low on my rankings and here is why. 
I have yet to ride the Jersey Devil, and I'm sure that ride alone will bump Great Adventure up a few spots. But here's the thing that I cannot stand about this park, the layout, and especially the dead ends. It's practically a half mile walk from Nitro all the way to Kinda Ka. Great Adventure is almost too big in a sense, and even with El Toro, in which I love by the way, it really doesn't get me that excited to visit. Remember, these rankings are based on my experiences and opinions of each park, not just the coasters that are located inside of them. Six Flags New England, a beautiful charming park that is nestled in between the main road in town and the Connecticut River. But that is one of the main things that make New England stand out from other Six Flags parks. The growth this place has seen over the last 30 years is unreal. And even though it's been a few years since their last good coaster edition, I really do love this park. And to be fair, Wicked Cyclone and Superman really make New England one of the best mid-tier Six Flags parks. Six Flags over Texas. I've only visited this park once and wasn't able to ride the new Texas Giant since it was under construction. But the good news, I will be back in 2022. From that one visit, this park offers a lot of charm and unique rides and attractions that you typically don't find at other Six Flags parks. The skyline of over Texas as you're driving up to it has to be one of the most intimidating due to five rides being over 200 feet tall. With all the new updates the park has made this season, I am sure over Texas will move up in my rankings. Six Flags St. Louis For some odd reason, every time I visit this park, I actually have a great time. I love the setting and how it's located along the side of the hill. Now it's been 12 years since I've ridden the boss, but I remember from way back then, while it was still rough, I really actually enjoyed and appreciated this massive layout that this CCI offers. But it's time to speak the truth, and that is Six Flags St. Louis really desperately needs a new coaster. So hopefully they won't have to wait too long to get one. Six Flags America On paper, this park looks pretty fancy. BM in Floorless, Intamin Hyper, Premier Spaghetti Bowl, and a Vacoma Flying Coaster. Plus, a pretty good flat ride collection and a nice water park. But then you get slapped with the reality when you visit. I really want to like this park, but sometimes it's just hard to. Maybe my feelings come from riding Mind Eraser a few too many times. It's been a few years since I visited this park, so I hear some better things are happening, and I'm honestly excited for the future of Six Flags America. Six Flags Darien Lake Viper is my second favorite coaster at the park, if that tells you much. Superman is top notch, and then after that, the quality dwindles. However, I do like the peacefulness that Darien Lake offers. I don't really know how to explain it other than relaxing, I guess. I really think Six Flags needs to start capitalizing off this park, because there's a ton of money that they're just sitting on with this property, with the hotel, theme park, concert venue, water park, and the massive campground. And finally, in my opinion, the worst Six Flags park that I've visited, and that would be The Great Escape. This is a very well-maintained park. Fun rides, a great water park, the wooden coaster Comet, and a million and one rides geared towards families and kids. And that helps make Great Escape, Great Escape. Now, if they would offer a major new coaster, then my feelings would most likely change. But for me, there isn't a lot about this park that gets me excited to visit. And I feel like there's just a lot that Six Flags can do with this property, but yet they don't, and it gets very frustrating. So there you have it, my personal rankings for each Six Flags park. If you've been to a handful of parks, how would you rank them? Please let me know in the comments. And as always, be happy, think positive, and keep riding coasters.